Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I would like to share my final thoughts and opinions on the Devo Knives first ever model Stout. Now I did get on the pre-order, obviously. Um, and this is the variant that I got. I got the all black. This is black titanium, the bolster lock essentially, black micarta, black blade. What you got with the pre-order, pre-order if you were on it, you get a little bottle opener, which is nice. I don't drink beer, I drink hard alcohol because I have issues. Um, you get extra hardware, you get a blank pivot, which I think was kind of unnecessary, but I am very thankful for them for thinking for uh, you know, thinking about that and offering that. Uh, an extra pocket clip, and just a bunch of other hardware. That is so amazing that they offered all these things at no extra cost. And this pouch is the highest quality freaking pouch I've ever gotten. It's this beautiful leather. Um, honestly, I don't know if it's real leather or not. It feels real. Could have fooled me. Um, and just the, the one pocket right here. And it's, this thing is just premium. It's just it's so awesome. I'm not expecting any of their other Devo knives to come in this. But if they are, I mean, hey, that's <laughs> this thing is pretty freaking nice. Um, so this thing was right around 300 bucks, And I will say that uh, I did do the, I believe it was Klarna or uh, some other like afterpay method to pay this thing off and I had to be a very patient individual to receive this knife. But I am so happy that I did because this thing is freaking sweet. I have followed both um, Kevin at Lefty EDC and Colin Mason Pierre um, on Instagram and YouTube and I've just I just followed the process of them going through all the trials and tribulations to bring this thing and I'm just looking at this thing right now. I'm sorry, it's a, a dark knife, dark background. I'm sorry, bear with me here. Um, let me see if I could put it on a cloth or something to make it pop a little bit more. I don't feel like I'm doing it justice here. This is just a, a wee cloth. There you go, that looks a little bit better, right? Um, I've been following these guys and their process of making this thing and they really have inspired me um, you know to eventually one day you know make my own stuff and I know it, it I'm sure it's a very stressful process it's crazy working with different manufacturers prototypes you know there's there's a uh, there's a price tag to all these things right you know these the, the experimentation and designs and things like that um, but I will say right off the bat this is a highly recommendable super amazing knife this is where you know ergonomics is perfection check this out tell me that isn't freaking perfect right there this thing is just freaking sweet and it is meant to go to work the action is wonderful on it i have these stock bearings in here i crank down on the pivot because as it came to me, it was like guillotine. And while, uh, you know, those boys over there might like it like that, um, I like it just a little, <laughs> little bit tighter. Um, but it was still really solid when I got it. There was no play in any dement uh, any like direction. There was no movement. The detent is wonderful. Um, this is just gonna be a raving video about this knife because I love this thing and I will be supporting these guys in you know any way that I can with their future you know projects and design and models that they're coming out with there's the buzz that's going to be coming out I think at the end of this week and I'm going to be on that pre-order so fast and I really hope my phone doesn't crash because I'm most likely going to be at work and away from my laptop um what else do they have going on? They have a model called the Mash and uh, what else? The Growler. I, I think it's the Growler that they're going to be having a White Mountain Knives exclusive. It's going to be their uh, budget oriented knife. And what I mean by budget oriented is that they're, 
it's going to come at a different blade material like this is 20 cv and that other one is going to be uh 154 cm or cpm 154 it's either one of those i mean it's the same shit essentially but um i'm gonna be on that thing so fast too like i'm gonna order one of those it's probably gonna be the same scheme we got going on here um here let's have a couple different size comparisons so the well, probably the most common one that's gonna be close to it is going to be the Demco Knives 8020.5. Um, the Demco has maybe just a little bit more handle, but the blade, like, check that out. The blade is pretty darn close. Um, you know, you do have this weird little humpy thing right here, but that's just a design aesthetic. I don't believe that interferes with the ergonomics at all. Um, here is a Civivi Elementum. It is clearly larger than the Elementum in both handle and blade. <clears throat> um, I have some Benchmates here. This is the Bug Out. And the Osborne 940. So it's the same handle and blade length for the most part on the 940. And... The stout is larger than the bug out, of course, as most things are larger than the bug out. <clears throat> Last but not least, I have some Spydercos. This is the PM2 and the Para 3. So there's that. So there you guys go. A little bit of uh, some visual size comparisons since uh, I'm too lazy to pull up the actual specs for this knife. Let's go ahead and do thickness up against the Para 3. Um, it is a little bit thicker than a pair of three, but blade stock is quite the same, and that actually really hurt reverse flicking with a middle finger because I smashed it at work. <clears throat> blade stock thickness is pretty darn the same, but this thing just feels way more premium than the pair of three because it has that that rounded off spine, and it's just damn, this thing just it. To some people, it may look a little funky. To me, I think it's extremely attractive design and it just, it works so well. This thing is just meant to go to work for sure. The transition on the, you know, the bolster to the scale, it's wonderful right here. On this side, you can feel it a little bit, but not as much. This side, it's seamless. It's wonderful. Maybe that's just my unit, but um, yeah, that's, that's a, uh, that's my thing. Um, for sure, um, I did get confirmation from Kevin that there is a tiny, tiny hollow ground, um, you know, on the stout. Um, it's practically unnoticeable. It's almost a flat ground. Um, <clears throat> I personally don't think I would have noticed any difference in use, um, but I appreciate a hollow ground and, you know, in some cases they definitely look more attractive than a flat ground. Um, pivot is really nice. And just the materials overall, the fin finish of this thing is just... <sighs> this thing is so good looking. It really is. Um, lock up. Wonderful. The, the detent. Like, I, I have a hard time even finding, figuring out what's oh, right here. It's like right there. So that's... Locked, that's the ball right there. There it is. And then locked. So, I mean, once you get it like there, it's already way past it, way past it. And it's just, this thing is just wonderful. Um, the tension on the bolster lock here is extremely light because the titanium lock is extremely thin and there is um you know a space right there of relief you see that little damn i need a flashlight or something to show this thing off on the inside um but just take my word for it this thing it was very easy to take apart to clean to you know to do basic maintenance on it's on a wonderful ceramic ball bearings or a detent ball it has a well i guess the the scale here, the micarta scale, is acting as a over-travel stop. 
and this thing is just it's wonderful it really is this is uh, gonna be a relatively short review uh, the pocket clip reversible tip up only because that is the right way to carry a knife nowadays and yeah, I uh, I personally don't think that this knife needed a mil titanium clip. Some people may argue that at that price point, they would have expected a mil titanium clip. But I am completely okay and satisfied with the functionality of you know the wire clip. It works just fine. It's so small, I don't feel it in use, whether I'm back here or I'm up here. Or I'm like this. It's just meant to go to work. It really is. This is, this is a no fuss kind of kind of design. It was essentially perfect right out of the pouch. No issues with it. Um, I count myself lucky for that because I tend to have little things here and there with uh, some units, regardless of price point. I think this thing was extremely well worth it, and I'm very very grateful to have uh, jumped up on the pre order to support these guys. And I'm very excited to see what they put out in the future. Um, you know, with the buzz, the growler, the sma uh, the, the mash, excuse me. Um, I will have my my Devo collection growing within the next you know year or so, and it's just gonna be wonderful. Today, actually, I was uh, I was at Home Depot getting some um, gardening stuff, but I saw on Instagram. Before I got out of my car, that they uh, they have some uh, some aftermarket scales that they had available, and a Mokutai backspacer. So I was like, damn, I need that thing. I really need it. Um, so I got the backspacer. It's gonna be a crazy, ridiculous pop of color. It's gonna be it's gonna be wild looking. And then I got the uh, marble raindrop carbon fiber scales that will be just. Super easy to, to put on here. You don't have to take apart majority of the knife to swap these uh, swap these scales. And it's just gonna be sick. It really is. And there's plenty of room in this pouch to keep all my stuff nice and safe. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, uh, Colin. And you guys are amazing, and I'm excited to see what you guys put out.